At the far, far western edge of China, where the nation meets the expanse of Central Asia, is the entrancing desert land of Xinjiang province. It seems a world away from the rest of the Middle Kingdom in about every aspect imaginable. On this walk and roll, we're heading to the west side for a taste of Xinjiang. Explore a market full of a herd's worth of lamb. Now, there's a whole lot of different parts here. Like, which ones do you guys use most? So it's the back leg. Uh, yeah, the back leg. And what about this part? Just the back leg. Just the back leg. Just the back leg. Up the back, okay. Uh, 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 uh. So you guys use this for many different dishes. So um, besides that, what other parts are like most common? Uh, I just said this 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 part, the back leg part, we use for the back leg. Now, what do we have to buy today? And the chef had to remind me in the market to not even touch the meat because I was not Muslim. Not that I was exactly interested in getting my hands all up on it. Now, what spices do you guys use most? Xinjiang is most of the cayenne pepper, because it's natural and the black pepper is more. Is both of these uh, cumin? This black pepper is more than this pepper. The flavor is better. Yeah, it's definitely a stronger scent than I'm used to. I mean, like, this is the one I've seen a lot. Yeah, that one's definitely much more strong. And besides that, you have many different spices as well, kind of the classic Chinese ones. Now, I've seen lots of chuar places like this on the street. Is chuar from Xinjiang? Yes, the chuar is Xinjiang. Now, what's the difference between the ones I've seen in this type right here? The chuar is more different. This is the chuar. We in Xinjiang are more chuar. Hmm. Yeah. I mean, how do you keep track? There's so many here. You know, how do you watch all of these? It's almost the same chuar, and the chuar is the chuar. It's a hot, smoky, busy, and unforgiving job, especially in the summertime heat. Learning it is definitely hard work. After flipping a few to give the appearance that I was actually learning to do this, I grabbed one off the fire and bit down. Semi mistake. It was insanely hot because just seconds earlier it was inches away from a glowing embryo of charcoal. But also awesome, because it was fresher, juicier, and all over like kebab concentrate. If I could do it all over again, I would still munch down. That's a sign of some crave-worthy eats. Roast up some sticks of meat. I've never ever heard of sweet lamb. Chopstick into a very, very big plate of chicken and noodles. Now, how should I do this? Do I just eat it together, or which is the way to start? You should first eat the meat, because the meat is very delicious. First eat the meat. This is noodles and wants to fight back, okay. Big, strap-like noodles and chicken has long been a part of the culture there. Albeit for generally the more wealthy side of the population. I mean, I think that's very interesting. Like, you would think chicken on top, start with that. But it's actually the noodles. You have to pull it out. Just noodles from back home. You know, it's a bit sweeter, a bit more sour. But still, noodles and tomato, that tastes like home. Now, is the chicken and noodles native from Xinjiang? That big. So is this like one chicken, two chicken, three chicken? So you guys have massive chickens out there. All that and more on this walk and roll.